Namaste, my friends. To the journey of the Eastern wisdom, let everyone be healthy, let everyone be happy, let everyone be blessed, let none suffer from any misery in this world, let there be peace, peace and peace in our life. Uh, last time we, we were discussing about what life demands to think, speak and act. What life demands from us and what do we demand from the life. So what we demand from the life if it goes against the existence, we are going to suffer. We discussed in detail. So today we should understand the life demands to think, speak and act wisely. To be happy, to be at peace, to be in love, to be in wisdom. We have almost 8.4 million species. You leave the tiger on its own in the forest. They are doing good. We do not. Our mind creates problems wherever we are. But if we change this mind completely and we start living wisely, <coughs> we are always happy. So it is important to understand how to think, speak and act in this world. If we respect, we care, the world created by the existence and we drop the word created by me. Created by me means my mind. That demands, that expects, that desires. The result is pain and the suffering. We'll understand step by step. It means how to think, speak, and act. How many times you were upset during the last three days? So the moment we start thinking, it is related to a person, person's attitude, my reaction, situation created by people related and not related to me, the world that I have created for myself. Now, tell me how many times your room in which you are sitting made you upset, the kitchen. Your car. The nature outside, the world as it is. So I normally tell people that if there is a God, God created love, we created attachment. God created love, we created attachment. God created, if I say so, to make us understand. God created wisdom, we, we created ignorance.
do we need to understand? Do we need to understand that very nature of the attachment versus the love in life that I discussed last time? Attachment versus love in daily life. You can see that attachment is emotional attachment. You can see that attachment is delusion. You can see that attachment is superimposed. We superimpose something that does not exist. That is attachment and delusion or ignorance, whatever you say. You see your son, now your mind superimposes something that does not exist. Something in my mind, a sense of attachment, a belongingness that does not exist. And from there, what happens, the mind begins expectation, desire. So from one superimposition that is non-existent in our relationship and the mind heavily superimposes, we want to praise and appreciate that attachment. So the mind enters into conflict and confusion and duality. So I have already created a conflict inside me then while living with the people in relations, situations are going to offer me. They're trying to understand how to think, speak, and act wisely. So for the sake of understanding, I'm just repeating what we discussed uh, last week. Attachment is nothing but selfishness. Love and the wisdom shows the path of unselfishness unselfishness attachment is the form of always taking no no you have come you should respect the mind has created a soup delusion no no you should adore me you should respect me you should care and then the mind realizes that you are not taking care everything is happening in the mind and i feel inserted One person is already frustrated, approaches me and says me something. So I don't realize he's already frustrated. But learning Eastern wisdom. There's a, there should be a difference between the two. Think. We are working, we are understanding how to think, speak and act. So the other person is not learning East and West, and so he has to be conditioned. He's already heavily conditioned by the society, so he has to react and expect. Well, whatever the minimum expectation you solve, you give, you fulfill, that is the way of the Eastern wisdom. Normally we think, why should I fulfill your expectation? First you fulfill my expectation. I told you, the love is in the form of giving, attachment is in the form of taking. Attachment is a weakness. It deludes us. Attachment is a bondage. Love is the freedom that contains the wisdom. And the attachment is a bondage that contains ignorance. Ultimately, the question comes to who we are. Who am I? If my nature is peace, happiness, love, and wisdom, why I superimpose any form of expectation, desire, appreciation from the world outside? But how to live in this world? 
that is the question and that question brings us to the question am i living wisely are you living wisely action outside and the attitude or the state of the mind inside nobody recognizes the state of the mind we have so that state of the mind is expressed in the form of my speech and my action good karma means the good action action so two actions are outside the speech and physical action and one action is inside that is the attitude in the state of the mind now just for a while think a uh, good good speech good action with a negative attitude or the second option the wrong action the wrong speech the negative speech and action with the right attitude my mind is constantly expecting something from the others so it is a negative attitude negative state of the mind but i am doing my action is 100 percent right but the state of the mind is full of expectation, desire, and obsession. But my action in the speech is much more than better. I offer you 10 recipes. I express the love, but outside and inside. So what is going to happen to you? You have invited people to offer the food to celebrate, but inside, that is one aspect. And then I react after in the celebration, in the event and situation, that becomes the wrong action. But I have a right attitude of the mind. Eastern wisdom is all about helping ourselves to discover that permanent peace and happiness to get rid of all anxiety, duality, conflict, and confusion. So we have to take care of ourselves first. We have to take care of the first. We are negative attitude means guided by the ego, demand, expectation from the people, situation. It drains my energy from the action, causes suffering. Even if we have a good attitude, but doing a wrong karma, we insert, we react, we blame others, that too is. So we should have both the right speech and action and the right state of the mind. Living wisely means filter out the wrong notions. It does not mean you express humility where it is not required. So how to how to have the right speech and action? supported by the right attitude in the mind supported by the right attitude in the mind that is important that is what we are trying to understand
So as we have understood that there is a kind of superimposition by the mind, I superimpose a sense of attachment over my honey, which does not exist. So first step that I have already superimposed. So my mind is filled with that expectation from the situation and the people and the group. Now I am doing an action, I'm celebrating with them. What is going to happen? You will continue to have a sadness on your face, inner sense of anxiety and duality. One option. Second option is what? Second option is that you have a right attitude and the right action. What is the right attitude and the right action? What is the right attitude in the mind and the right action? It is so simple. We need to be aware. <laughs> you invited 10 people to celebrate. <clears throat> Why you have invited to celebrate life? to celebrate life by celebrating an event. What is the most important factor of celebration? Because you invited them, so you are good, or someone invited you. In both the cases, what should be the state of my mind? My mind should be filled with the attitude, an idea and understanding of the celebration rather than expectation. Rather than any form of expectation, my friend, you are going to someone's or you have invited them to celebrate. Celebrate what? Celebrate peace and happiness. Do not celebrate expectation, appreciation, attachment at all. So when you keep your mind in that state, of awareness, you are living wisely. The wisdom lives in your mind, and through that wisdom, the expression outside comes, the right action. You are emotionally free because of learning Eastern wisdom. If someone in that group who has come to celebrate, they do not have that idea and understanding of the Eastern wisdom, leave them. Do not react. What do you mean by reaction? You have not superimposed any tag on them. You continue with your right attitude in the mind. What is right attitude? It's emotional freedom. What is right attitude? It is a celebration. I should express and act in peace and happiness in spite of the fact that others are not doing it. The moments I expect others should also do it, I have already superimposed and then I'm living unwisely. I'm making this talk a very simple. When you listen to again and again, take an example, a practical example, someone rings the bell, you find your relation at the door. What should be the right attitude, right speech, and right action? You know it. <clears throat> but suddenly the mind takes you to the memory lane with whom, with that person you had reacted, or he or she has reacted. Once it goes into the memory lane, we are done. We are done. You know, all these mantras, they guide us to live into that state of the wisdom, the love and the care and the peace and the happiness. Living wisely means my 
state of the mind may end a thought inside or the way I am thinking about others, my speech, my action, are in harmony, are in sync. And that is where we need, I would say, a mental effort. I follow what is right and good. You are celebrating an event. What is right and good? Do you think in your mind? I should welcome, I should respect, I should care everyone in spite of the fact that others are not doing like this. So when I am moving out of the love, the responsibility with my speech and action, I have a right attitude in the mind. I have a right speech and I have a right action. Rest are details. Think of it. Now think opposite. Why mind forgets that it is a celebration, it is an event, I have to move with the responsibility to, to, to in relationship, why I forget? Simple answer, the attachment or the delusion or the blame and the complaint, they all are superimpositions. Life is here and now. Living is here and now. We should not go to the memory lane, we return with the blame, complaint, reaction, idea in the mind that is going to be expressed sooner or later and that is why eastern wisdom says purify the mind that is one aspect of right state of the mind inside followed by the right speech and the right action. But uh, we find this mind starts cooking a story inside. What is that story? And how that is under how we can understand that? During any event or a job, you have seen that people are workaholic, are fully busy. You are lacking wisdom, whether it is an event or a celebration. I do understand. Check your mind. You are working, no problem. But you become are fully busy. There is a lack of wisdom. We are unorganized. We are not using the intellect. The mind is overwhelmed with the attachment. So you organize for every event, whether you are celebrating, whether you are living in relationship or others have invited you in the world. So if you apply that wisdom, you are organized, you follow that wisdom, you ne will never go into insight. You does not carry the burden of the burden in the mind for the next day. You apply the wisdom even in celebrating an event. You apply the wisdom even in inviting people. Same way when you wake up in the morning, <coughs> my mind lives into that state of the wisdom to deal, to relate, 
with every people, situation, and event. What we are discussing, the right state of the mind with the right speech and the right action, that is our focus. So we check right state of the mind. The right state of the mind is to respect, adore, and care, and appreciate others. The wrong state of the mind is to expect, blame, complain, and have a lot of expectations from others. So that is corrected. So when you have a right state of the mind, so it brings, it expresses itself into the right speech. Whatever the occasion is, you are ready to give. You are not expecting and ready to take. And followed by the action. Let us make it a little uh, more general, and then we will become uh, specific. You are driving a car. At present, while driving, you are, your karma, your action is the job of a driver. You are in the kitchen. You are a homemaker. But mind is jumping at many places. That creates the problem. Why the mind is jumping? Because we are not aware, we are not living wisely. The person may be a driver, a teacher, an employer, or a homemaker, performs action with a calm, peaceful, and cheerful mind. There is an absence of hesitation, anxiety, anger, aggression while performing that action. The very absence indicates that we are not dictated and guided by our delusion, superimposition. The seeker performs the karma with the focus. You focus on the action in relationship to the other, not on the I thought. No, I thought says, adore me, respect me, care me, and, and as a seeker, you say, let me take care of others, let me respect them, let me understand them. You are not overwhelmed. You are not fully busy. You will find a sense of freedom. That is the secret of karma yoga. Karma yoga, we say that is also yoga. So yoga means that state of the mind is not affected, dictated, disturbed by any person, any event outside. But if it is affected, it is influenced, this, then what happens? then we become a representative of our ego that blames and complains, that demands I should be appreciated. Why people do not notice me? I will do all my action for the sake of recognition. That we is a problem. And that is what we say. It is an impurity of the mind. Impurity of the mind. And that creates unfavorable condition. Tell me one thing simple. Is the reaction in the present or in the past or future. Action is always in the present. We forget that. The mind, full of expectation and the delusion, forgets the action is in the present. So we go into the memory lane, bring the impressions from there, and then we act. And that action becomes the wrong action.
So every day, check yourself. Do you feel light, relaxed, or obsessed and attached, or craving? You can make a differentiation inside your mind first before you express any, before you speak or act. Body seems relaxed, our body seems hesitated. You are doing every action supported by calmness and peace. All your drop, you are doing all the action, all your work in hesitation and expectation. That is the meaning of changing our life from unfavorable to favorable conditions. Then what happens? That anxiety drops, the duality drops, the blame and complaint is no more there. You are living your life in your thought, speech, and action with a calmness, with a joy, respite. You will find. <clears throat> with hundreds of people, or you are alone, because the thought, speech, and action, the mental state inside the speech and the action are in sync. You experience calm, relaxed, you are aware, you are living wisely. So here the relationship do not matter. Your thinking of the right thought and the right speech and the right action matters. So what happens, the mind drops that expectation, craving and obsession and attachment. As long as there is an emotional dependence, there is bound to have an expectation, anxiety, duality, conflict. It's an emotional bondage. It limits me. It squeezes me. It squeezes me inside and outside. I try to be good. It doesn't happen. And then it causes a lot of challenges. You never forget to live wisely. You are ready to correct if you have, if you start thinking, speaking, and acting wrongly. Internally, you are correcting. My master used to say, if you are a perfect seeker, inside your mind, you are a monk. Who is a monk? Monk has no obsession, no expectation. No blame, no complaint. The monk lives like a wind that flows and touches everyone with a coolness and calmness. When we become a monk inside, freedom from the false side, and doing all of our works. With a soul aim of giving, giving respect, giving care, giving love, you will see the on that very day, if you are able to maintain your attitude, the life changes. So what is behind it? The mind and the intellect. The intellect with the right thinking follows the action. The intellect has the right thinking. It results into a right action. We need not to change anything outside. Inside. We need not to change anything outside in doing our action, because we already know what actions we need to do. We need to change the attitude and the mind. <clears throat> you come to me, so mental attitude, let me offer you the respect and the care that you need. 
without expecting anything. Well, that very expectation is just superimposing. So when I superimpose on our mind that idea of expectation and the emotional baggage, now I colored you with that idea. Coloring with that idea means that I have a heavy expectations from you. But you don't meet my expectations, so the frustration begins inside me. I have invited you for a celebration that I have an emotional baggage and I'm suffering. Right knowledge, right desire, right action, simple. <coughs> right knowledge, we are in the mind. Right knowledge should follow the right thought. Let the thought be in the form of a desire, so that there should be a right desire. So if the right desire is there, so then there will be a right action. Finish. You see, I'm in, invoking another beautiful principle. And I, I know, I know you will understand that. First, uh, find out who is who is performing an action in the world in relationship. It is the body, sense organ, mind, intellect. Clear? They all are doing the action. They are performing the action. You know, I'm moving in my larynx and I'm speaking to you. Clear? Now tell me, are you your body? Are you your sense organs? Are you your mind? Are you your intellect? None of them. So who has, who is filled with the expectation? The mind. And the mind wants the expectation to be fulfilled. But question is, who am I? Where I am? So my master used to say that, think in a manner that this body, mind, sense organ, and the intellect have been gifted to me by the existence. So I should not seek any kind of an emotional baggage, an emotional dependence or expectation or a craving from anyone. Instead, I should give. I should be ready to give respect and love and care the way the existence has offered me this gift. We have to repeat this. You know, you, you learn that mantra, you know, that gives you the sense of this. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sing with me, Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu So I, we are trying to understand a very subtle principle so first step is that the body, mind, sense, organs, intellect has been gifted to me by the existence. So what kind of a gift I can offer to the existence through my body, mind, intellect, ego? Tell me. Existence has gifted me, this body, 
mind, sense, organ, intellect, the human body. That's why I become conscious, I become self-aware. What gift in return I should offer to the existence? My master used to say that I should participate in the working of the existence 24 by 7 in my thought, speech, and action without expecting anything from anyone outside. So I have a right knowledge, I have a right desire, I have a right knowledge to celebrate an event, for example. So I have a right desire. So what the right desire says? Right desire says I should offer the best. I should give respect to everyone. I should adore and appreciate. But at the same time, minus any blame, complaint, expectation. Because In other way, our masters teach us that we should play our role. Existence is the director. Like in Hollywood film, there is a plot, there is a scene, there is a situation, and the director asks the actor to perform the role. Let us play our role. <coughs> There is an event, let us play our role. Someone comes, let us play our role. But while playing our role, there is no sense of expectation, blame, complain, emotional baggage. But it is an action. We perform our action with an attitude of love, care, and respect. in the form of giving, of our best. And the life changes. So the mind perceives the world outside of people, of relationship, of objects and the things. What is that attitude of the mind by which it perceives the world outside the people and the relationship? That will define our action. So the, the way the mind perceives the world, first session is the perception, first step, first pointer is the perception. And because of the expectation, blame and complaint of taking, creates a deception in my relationship, a delusion in my relationship. One option. The mind perceives the world as it is. Now it is with the existence, it is ready to give, ready to offer respect and the love. We don't care what other offers to us. If one has anger, they are going to offer the anger. They don't have any other thing, but I have love, so let me offer my love and my care. So I'm in the mood of the giving. Others are also in the mood of giving anger, expectation, love. I'm not. It can happen in a, in a millisecond. So that our master also, these are not very complex, but it appears. Uh, the master says, no, 
master so student asked the master oh how it is possible i must know my duty and responsibility in a particular situation in the world or event or a celebration is my job is to expect <laughs> blame and complain answer is no answer is no you know and i also know the answer is no so duty and responsibility living while living in the world with the people group and situation simply means i am a hundred percent sure what i am supposed to do i will do it what i'm not supposed to do i will never do it do you understand simple summary what i am supposed to do i will definitely do you know i'm, I'm organizing a group i have a group session uh, since the COVID started not a single session i missed for the last four years why as a guide, as a teacher, as a coach, it is my responsibility. I must do what I'm supposed to do. Think of, remember this again. I should do what I'm supposed to do. I should not do what I like to do. Oh, that guy is crazy. I'm not going to offer anything to that guy, crazy guy no i'm not supposed to do that i'm not supposed to do that even if a person in my group is crazy it doesn't mean that i should no leave the session i'm not I, i'm not going to say that again i'm stressing what i'm supposed to do i must do but what I'm supposed to do, what is right and good? What is right and good? You are a mother. So what I'm supposed to do, the role of a mother, yes. What is right and good, the role of a mother to my kids? Oh, some friends come, so my friendship matters. What I'm not supposed to do is blame, complain, and reaction in that event. Is it not simple? Is it not? Is it complex to understand it? Is, or it is simple? What I like, I want to do. What I'm supposed to do, I don't do it. Then there is a problem, conflict, blame, complaint, reaction, duality, and <coughs> when i do when i think speak and act what i'm supposed to do means what is right and good this mind fails to make us crazy lazy obsessed anxious but if i do what i'm not supposed to do but what i like that very liking contains an element of blame, complaint, reaction, and expectation. What I'm supposed to do with you, the moment the session starts, I must speak. I must focus on the knowledge part. I must focus on the practice part. I should not waste even a single minute of yours. That is my responsibility. What I'm supposed to do, I must do it. With the right frame of the mind, with the right attitude. No, you do not understand. Let me make you understand again. No, still you do. No, let me make you understand again. To go back 
the existence is offered us body mind senses in this human body it is a gifted human body tiger cannot think separately i can think and make a right choice why i am making a choice towards blame complain expectation why why i am expecting that i can think is it with that human body mosquito or the fly cannot think why shouldn't i think what is right and good, what I'm supposed to do, I must do it. But I must do it with a joy. And then I check myself in my head, what I like to do, is it that I'm supposed to do? No, drop that liking and disliking. Trust in your head, be clear, be cheerful, Start performing the action. So what is going to happen when you perform the action? It will purify the mind. It will not give an opportunity to the mind to return to, to retrieve the past. That is going to happen. And what is going to happen once you have that knowledge and clear understanding, you sit in meditation, you'll be absorbed for hours together. Beauty of the karma, beauty of the action, coming from the pure mind, the purified state of the mind, the relaxed mind and the calm mind. Where is that? No, after all, my action decides others my action makes others decide about who am i nobody looks at my mind so i should have a proper right frame of the mind what is right and good what i'm supposed to do it and i'm doing it i must do it so that Action becomes very beautiful. You move with a kindness and compassion and love, always in the mood of giving. When you are in the mood of the giving, mango tree is mode of the giving, oranges are in the mood of the giving. So we are in the mood of the giving. We always like to have those trees in our backyard. Always love to have. So what happens, you know, that that sense of doership drops. What do you mean? That sense of that I which supports blame, complain, and expectation that drops. That doer drops in from my head. When the doer drops, ha, ah, we are always full of peace and happiness. That is the result of our action in daily life, guided by the purified state of the mind. Are you changing, attending the sessions? Are you changing, attending the session? Do you keep track that the peace continues in the morning, afternoon, evening, before sleeping? Are you finding you are different within? Previously, you used to get upset with relations. Now you find a smile on your face. Are you changing? If yes, you are evolving. Are you aware how many times you were upset after the last session? That frequency of being upset has minimized. You realize the cause and you have removed it. You are a seeker. 
You are a great seeker. And I'm returning, reminding you, remember, never forget. But the Sangat train is the Sangat from listening and learning until you reach to that state of perfect calm and peace. Listening and learning opens the mind, removes that areas of the darkness in the mind which causes the impurity. That is why we say satasangatve nisasangatva. So when areas of the darkness caused by the blame and complaint and expectations gone, that is what the detachment is, dispassion is. So once we live with that state of this dispassion, listening and learning, remember, listening, learning to dispassion, dispassion to freedom from the delusion. So mind will not create an idea to superimpose my expectations on others. Nisasangatve niramohatvam. Nisasangatve niramohatvam. So it's a series, listening and learning constantly. Then you assimilate, or how you assimilate, you start thinking in that way. When you start thinking in that way, so then there is a sense of dispassion. So when you continue with this, listening and learning, contemplation, and uh, this passion, that this passion results into a freedom from the delusion. So what happens when you have a freedom from the delusion? I can promise you. The moment you have a, you live in this passion and you have a freedom from the delusion. This mind is not going anywhere. This mind will never become crazy. This mind will never become crazy. It will never be obsessed. It will remain seated. Where it is seated, remain seated in peace and happiness, love and wisdom. <coughs> why? Sorry, why? Because it reveals that inner peace and happiness. Chaltatve nirmohatvam nirmohatve nishchaltatvam and nishchaltatve jivanamukti. You are liberated. You enter into the state of the awakening. You wake up in the morning. You check. You check your state of the mind. There is a sense of freedom in the afternoon. There is a sense of freedom and the peace in the evening before going to sleep. That is what the awakening is. That is what helps you to recognize that the peace and happiness are your essential nature. You don't allow your morning, afternoon, evening, and the night to be dictated by anything outside in your mind. So what happens then? The mind becomes so kind, humble. Humility is there. It remains in the state of the humility. It is not with reference to anyone outside. You don't pose to be humble because the humility becomes your nature. Oh, humility becomes my nature. Then what happens? In the presence of that humility, the, the peace and the happiness and the joy is constantly working, working, working in your thought, in your speech, in your action. You continue the celebration, and I wish that you are making your entire life a celebration. You're making your entire life a celebration. You know, celebrating the event, they come and go. It may be a one-day affair, it may be a weekly affair. But when I celebrate life, it makes my entire life a celebration, my friend. Thank you.